Hi, Royal Ones. This is Miss Gigi coming at you again with another juicy episode. Let's get straight into it. Let me go back and apologize. I can feel it that I pissed off somebody. One of my Royal Ones friends or family members that might be in the military. What I said in my previous video, maybe I was going in a little bit too much on the veterans. But let me explain something. Let me let me give you more insight and clarity. Okay, so I think that the some of the not all of them, but a lot of them that are going through with they they have flashbacks, and so the 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 thing is they they take the military, they they're out of the military, and but then sometimes they it carries over to their job, and then they treat it like that, and it becomes a different type of uh, um, um, battlefield. And so now that they're in government, they use that as a form of type of mental mind, mental, mental battlefield. And so that ends up creating, you know, all sorts of mess in the military. That's why they got like nuclear weapons. It's like, what the hell? All these type of biological warfare weapons is because the war has taken, has been taken over from the military, the actual battlefield into our government. And now they're creating all types of nuclear wars and nuclear weapons and warheads and stuff like that. And it's like, who the hell are you fighting? And it's like, um, I understand that, you know, we need some form of government, some form of military and government for protection. Like when the FBI, CIA is and all of that as the outer skirts of the borders of the government to you know make sure because I know the United States is a free country and we endure we we enjoy a lot of comforts and that makes a lot of people you know envious of the way we live our life and they want to you know have the audacity to try to take what try to um take us over and try to live like this and so um and they have nuclear wars and nuclear threats and stuff like that but my thing is if you nuke a country and then you try to go in and invade that country and move into that country. Do you know that all that stuff in the air is going to get in the water? It's going to seep into the fish and the and the animals. And then that's going to seep underground in the water aquifer. And then so when you go turn on the tap of the kitchen sink and you're going to drink water, you're drinking the Jim Jones Kool-Aid. So you're going to take yourself out. So they're not really thinking this through with all these nuclear weapons and stuff. So um, they're going to end up taking themselves out and uh it's 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 really it's that but i understand the need for military and government but that's not but it can't be too much because then it becomes like a a military battlefield behind the you know over office behind the desk and it becomes a different type of military battle and um so that's what that was my thing and so i think that there needs to be more um college students who our majors in that in that in the legal sector that can make a difference in drafting these bills in a more humane way. And then in regards to negotiating with the terrorists, of course, they need to be turned over to the military. And I think the the secretary of defense is a good person to be from the military to be in that position uh, as far as, you know, you know, criminal justice bill. But the other stuff needs to be majors in there um, that operate in their field. And so who know what they're doing, who has experience, who has textbook knowledge and wisdom. Like the people in accounting needs to be have to be accounting majors. And a lot of these needs to be industry specific positions that these pe people have degrees specializing in this specific area of expertise. And there's too much too much veterans in government. And so therefore it becomes like a that's why it's becoming so much of a, a battlefield. Or uh, it seems like there's a lot of war on crime, a war on drugs, a war on this, a war on that. It's because there's too many vets with that war mindset and there's not enough peace in the, the military, in the government. There's not enough peace in government to think like that because, you know, they they, they so war minded. And so that becomes a way of thinking. And then you think about, you bring about. And so that's why there's so much dysfunction in government because there's too much war minded people. And no, no disrespect for what they do for our country and keeping us safe. It's just that there's not enough peace going on in their mindset. And it's like, this war, it seems spiritual. In fact, it is spiritual. And so, you know, that's that's my uh, 
my clarity of thought for the former video. Because I, if, I, if I offended someone, my royal ones that's in the military, I apologize. My sincerest apologies. I never meant to offend anybody. I make myself clear. That's just, it's not all military veterans that think like that, but it's just some of them are that war minded and they, they mess it up for the ones that are good. But we need a safe and secure border and we appreciate the freedom to live at peace. And um, I'm pro-military and I'm pro-guns, so I'm not disrespect. I'm not hating on the military. I have nothing against the military. It's just that I think that a lot of militaries, they make they too much too much military and government that's making it uh, uh, into a military battlefield, and um, paper and pen style. It becomes a you know a, a paper thing, like a paper battle, like a keyboard bully, like you know, like a digital. It becomes like it's that type of military now it's not guns and wars the ammo anymore it becomes like more like a psychological thing and so i just um i had to make that clear and i think that we need to be less less of them in there and um and more of the college majors in those areas of expertise in those fields all right royal ones um let's talk about how obama improved the world their reputation in the world, America's reputation. Um, he visited more countries and met with more world leaders than any previous president during his six months in office. Uh, that's one, 177. This is part 13. Uh, 178, as he promised, he gave a speech at the major Islamic forum in Cairo early in his administration. 179, he made a speech at a U.S. mosque to demonstrate his commitment to religious rights and send a message to Muslims around the world. So that was a very positive impact he made right there. Number 180, Obama restored America's reputation around the world as a global leader. Absolutely. 181, Obama reestablished and reinforced our partnership with NATO and other allies on strategic international issues. Number 182, Obama closed a number of secret detention facilities. Now, I had no idea that they were still um, having these detention facilities around the world like this. This is, um, that's important to close it down. Um, number 183, Obama improved relations with the Middle East countries by appointing special en envoys. 184, Obama pushed, to pushed forward the first realistic Middle East peace strategy and more than a decade without ab abandoning the two-state resolution res solution. Number 185, Obama pushed for military to emphasize greater development of foreign language skills. Okay, all right. Yeah, there needs to be more uh, diversity of language. The military needs to be able to, to communicate in that language to, to, in order to negotiate with that country. So that's important, yeah. That's for negotiation purposes and, you know, communication, clearly. 186, Obama offered $400 million to the people living in Gaza while calling on both Israel and Palestinians to stop inciting the violence. Yeah, to keep the peace over there. A lot of, a lot of them got injured. So that was the United States way of showing up as a, um, the big brother of it all. Say, hey, stop your stuff. Stop arguing over. Stop fighting. No, let's be peaceful. Let's live in peace. Number 187, Obama refused to give Israel the green light to attack Iran over their possible nuclear nuclear program. Oh, my gosh. Listen, with this nuclear weapon stuff, man, I'm telling you, once that stuff gets in the air, it gets in the water aquifer, you're going to be drinking Jim Jones Kool-Aid. I'm just saying, everybody going to be drinking it. So you need to think about when that stuff get airborne. Ain't no, ain't nobody gonna be safe. One eighty-eight, Obama ordered the closure of the prison at Guantanamo Bay, although it was blocked by Congress. Why are we still locking up prisoners of war? Like seriously, like we we still doing that? Oh Lord Jesus, that needs to be a better way, more humane way to deal with it. So I'm so glad that they're dealing with it that way, in a different way, more humanely. Number 189, Obama ordered a review of a, our detention and interrogation policy and prohibited the use of enhanced interrogation. Yeah, because dealing with the um, 
and the terrorists and stuff like that. There needs to be a better way. They are human beings too. Just get the information out of them. The FBI, the CIA, they know how to interrogate these people. Get the information they need and then just put them in prison. You know, we ain't got to be doing all this enhanced interrogation. Lord have mercy. We got too much things to focus on. Number 190. Obama ordered all secret detention facilities in Eastern Europe and elsewhere to be closed. Absolutely. We don't need no secret detention centers. Seriously? I didn't even know that was a secret. Oh, Lord. 191. Obama released the Bush torture memos. Now, let me tell you something. The United States do not play with these criminals, though. I'm just saying, like, we have zero tolerance for threats and bullies. Like, y'all know the feds ain't with that. That you, You're not finna just come up in here and be uh, making your demands and ransoms and think that they're gonna comply. Like, <laughs> no, not really. You're not getting away with that. So uh, they torture. They It's inhumane, but necessary. It's a necessary evil, but you ain't got to take it that far. It's just get extract the information and let them go. And kill them and be done with it. Just, you know, be done with that situation. 192. On his second day in office, Obama banned torture, reversed, reversed all the Bush torture policies, and put the U.S. in full compliance with the Geneva Convention. Now, I like that. I like that. I like that. Yeah, put them in. And I like that. Uh that was just a lot. That was a lot. And uh, that just freed up a lot of time and a lot of energy. <laughs> Number 192, that was important. 193, in response to the emerging ARAP spring, he created a rapid response fund assisting emerging democracies with foreign aid, debt relief, technical assistance, and investment packages in order to show the United States stance with them. Okay. We, we do need to help foreign aid, foreign countries, but also we need to keep some more of that money on, on home, at home as well. Because we do spend a lot of money being friends on our friends, and then we have rapid debt here. So I think we need to just, you know, balance that out a lot better. 194, um, Obama ended the F-22 program, saving $4 billion. Though the 187 Aircraft cost three hundred and fifty-eight million dollars each to build. It has never flown a combat mission. We just wasted dollars right there. Wasted dollars because the war, like I said, it's not even in the physical. It's more spiritual now. That's why you never flown the aircraft. It's more spiritual than anything. One ninety-five. Obama passed the Iran Sanctions Act to prevent war and encourage the Iranian government to give up their nuclear program. It's a lot, a lot of, oh my gosh. Thank goodness for that. 196, Obama ended the Iraq war. That was powerful. That was very powerful. Um, released the troops and everybody got home. Everybody got rested and got deployed and sent them home to be with their families after so many years of being away. Um, 197, um, Obama worked to keep our withdrawal from Afghanistan on track despite the GDP opposition and reiterated that the commitment in 2014. Yeah. Iraq and Afghanistan, yes. Um, 198, Obama conducted a secret mission by the SEAL Team 6 to rescue two hostages held by Somali pirates. Wow. Wow. Um, 199, through... Through the United Nations um, Ambassador Susan Rice, Obama helped negotiate a peaceful split of Sudan into two countries, creating an independent South Sudan. Okay. All right. The North and the South weren't getting along, so yeah. That's like North Korea and South Korea, so hey. Sometimes it needs to be a split of the North and South in order to keep peace and for the you know unarmed civilians. And two hundred number 200, Obama helped make donations to Haiti, Haiti tax deductible in 2009 in response to the Haiti quake. All your, all, your, all your donations was tax deductible. In 2001, Obama established a new U.S.-China strategic and economic dialogue. Yeah, because uh, instead of, you know, having a fuss and fussing with China, it needs to be like a negotiation. Like, hey, look, economic dialogue. We can both make money here if we get along. And we do this thing right. 
we could both get rich. So I agree with that. And 202, Obama issued executive order blocking interference and helping to stabilize Somalia. Oh, okay. 203, Obama established new, more reasonable policies in our relations with Cuba, such as allowing Cuban Americans to visit their families and send money to support them. Yeah, because, you know, Fidel Castro, there was a lot of tension there for years with what Fidel Castro did. Number 206, uh, the new policies in Cuba led to thawed relations and the first U.S. embassy in Cuba in more than 55 years. That was needed. That was much needed. Just a lot of Cuban Americans live here. That was needed. Number 205. Obama became the first U.S. president to visit Cuba in more than 80 years. Because there, there was a war uh, tension between U.S. and Cuba. So I'm glad that that was negotiated. Two, 206. Obama negotiated a deal with Iran that will prevent them from getting a nuclear weapon anytime soon without firing a single shot or invading their country. I'm real glad that negotiations went well. Number 207. As a result, Obama, as a result of the Iran government, Iran shipped pretty much all of its nuclear material to Russia. All right. That was real good to talk him down, Obama. That was real good. Number 208. Obama became the first U.S. president to visit Jamaica in more than 30 years. Worked to restore relations with the country and signed a new a natural gas distribution agreement with the country. Yay! I can't believe we haven't visited a president, U.S. president, visited Jamaica in thirty years. That's interesting. Jamaica is a very beautiful country. Well, they they signed a natural gas agreement, so that was that was very good for the economy. Yeah. Two oh nine. Obama signed laws extending some privacy protections to U.S. allies. A reversal of the Bush practice uh, of spying on people. Like Angela Merkel and the like. Yeah, the U.S. be spying on people. And then number 10, Obama instituted Power Africa. I was proud of that. An initiative to bring electrical generation to greater parts of the African, of the African continent. All right, Roy, it was. Let me, tell me what you think about Obama's impact on the world. Um, Let me see. Uh, he... His impact on the U.S. and the world, the reputation. So tell me what you think about how these laws impacted you personally and how you feel about what was going on in this part of the world at this time. Let me know what you think. Um, click the comments below for more, more conversation about each of these uh, laws that he implemented. Thank you so much for listening to this message. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe. Love, hugs, and kisses. And don't forget to go and visit Barack Obama's page and tell him happy President's Day. Love, hugs, and kisses, Roy Ones. Bye.